Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. If you are new to amateur radio, or as I was back in the late 1990s, not new to amateur radio, but new to repeaters, then there are things that you'll want to know to be a good citizen of whatever repeater you might be using. And that is the point of this video. I have based the contents of this video heavily on information I got from several organizations published repeater etiquette documents, as well as my own experience as a member of the local club's repeater committee. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Now there's a right way and a wrong way to behave on a repeater. Understanding the foundations behind the existence of these repeaters will help us understand the why behind it all. However, this video is on a very different format than what I usually use. Hi, I'm K9JRD, Dorothy Gable, and an amateur radio operator as well. Let's discover the do's, don'ts, and how-to's about repeaters. I'll be asking the questions. First, why do we need to know etiquette for repeaters? What makes it different from HF? Well, the first thing to remember is that it is not HF. There are certain things we do on HF as a matter of course that just aren't done on a repeater. Conversely, there are things that we do on a repeater that we just do not do on HF. They are different paradigms and we need to learn to acclimate to each. What are the purposes for repeaters? Well, the heartbeat of amateur radio is creating a community through the airwaves. The soul of local radio communities revolves around area repeaters where we can talk about our day, share stories or information about radios, antennas, or the state of the weather. It is easy to see a local repeater is just another fun outlet of our hobby of amateur radio and to some extent it is, but it is more than that. What are the purposes for repeaters? Well, one of the core reasons for the, their existence is emergency communications. In fact, many repeaters, this is the primary purpose for the existence of that repeater. These emergency communications can happen at any time and are not confined to weather events. Any practice that minimizes its availability for this purpose is to be avoided. We'll talk about more about this as we go along. We also have to remember that the repeater is a shared resource. We're not alone. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to my little group of buddies. We have to share this resource with any amateur radio operator that chooses to use a repeater. And any practice that prevents other people from legitimate use of the repeater is not acceptable. Again, we will touch on this as we go along. I've heard people talk about the annoyance factor. What is this? Well, there may be a, quite a few people listening to the repeater while they're actively involved in doing something else. I, I know I do that. I'm in the shop writing scripts for these videos or up to my eyebrows in some kind of bench experiment or editing videos or whatever and the radio is on and I'm listening to the repeater. These are the people who in the case of an emergency are always available to help right away. Repeater use practices that are potentially annoying or offensive to those who consistently monitor the repeater should be avoided. Why is this? Because these people will eventually shut off their radios to avoid the annoyance and then they're no longer available to help in the case of an emergency or in the case that someone's on looking for them. Besides, you know, being an annoyance on a repeater is certainly no way to make friends. Anything else before we plunge into the do's and don'ts? Well, there's the ever-present, all-important legal factor. And you'll hear me say this again and again. It is so easy to forget things like identifying ourselves when enjoying a great conversation 
all transmissions associated with our use of a repeater are governed by Part 97 of the FCC regulations, and we must always adhere to these. What is the first thing to do on a repeater? Let's see. The first rule on both HF and the repeater is always, always, always listen, listen, listen. It's very easy to jump into the car, start the engine, turn on the radio quickly, grab the mic, and start throwing out your call sign for a mobile conversation. You know, it's a shared resource. And there may be someone already using the repeater, and you could be tromping all over them. When you turn on that radio, listen for a little while. If the repeater's not in use, then throw out your call. Or... If you have something to add to an existing conversation, maybe join in the conversation in a courteous way. I'll talk more about this when we get to the how-tos. Anything else? Next also has to do with the repeater being a shared resource, but also for emergency communication. Leave space. You know, it's real easy to hear the other person let go of their PTT. And then we're so into the conversation, we're so eager to reply to whatever it is that they just got done saying, and we hit our PTT without hardly there being a pause. Meanwhile, someone might be trying to either join the conversation or make an emergency use of the repeater and they just can't get in. We want to leave room between transmissions for folks to get into the repeater should they need to or want to. We want to leave at least a couple seconds or so between transmissions. Now, the easiest way to be sure to do this is to always wait for the repeater tail or the RF carrier to drop completely. This is more than just hearing the courtesy tone if the repeater has one. And related to this is that it takes time. Now, your HT or your radio transmits a CTCSS or PL tone, the repeater has to hear that tone, decode the tone, go through whatever it goes through, activate its RF output, and finally the audio gets out onto the airwaves. If you hit your PTT and immediately begin talking, the beginning of whatever you're saying is likely to be cut off. And this is especially true in repeater systems where two or more repeaters are linked and the delays are cascaded down the chain. To be sure the beginning of your transmission is not cut off, push your PTT, wait at least one or two seconds, then begin talking. So I need to slow down, pause, take a breath. Any other things to be aware of? Well, there's the issue of music in our environment while using the repeater, and I've heard this a number of times, too. You know, we're driving down the road enjoying some tunes when a friend of ours calls on the repeater. We pick up the mic and start talking. Meanwhile, there's Michael Jackson singing for all he's worth in the background. Remember that it's illegal for us to transmit music even if it's in the background. If you hear that call from your friend, shut off the music before you grab the mic to answer to the call. Is there a special lingo to use or avoid on a repeater? Well, first we want to use plain English. We want what we have to say to be easily understood. As such, we choose not to use special abbreviations, cue signals, or funky terminology and the like. One example of this is saying, I'm destinated, instead of saying, I have arrived at my destination, or I'm home, or I'm at the store, or saying, I'm at my QTH, instead of saying, I'm home now. First of all, we're always at our QTH, because QTH refers to our present location. So saying, I'm at my QTH is like saying, I'm where I'm at. (laughs) Doesn't make a lot of sense. Sometimes I've heard people use phonetics over the repeater. Is this a good practice? Well, using phonetics is a very common practice on the HF bands and for good reason. But by and large, they are unnecessary most of the time on a repeater. 
phonetics should be reserved for when it's clear that the other person is not getting something and the phonetics will help them get it. People will generally more readily recognize W-A-2-P-U-X than if I were to say Whiskey Alpha 2 Papa Uniform X-Ray. Now, when phonetics do become necessary, use the internationally recognized phonetics. It should be Kilo 9, Golf Romeo Delta, not Kevin 9, Grab Running Ducks. What else should I keep in mind? The second aspect of language we use on the repeater has to do with the choice of words. You know, it is so easy to forget that we're not just sitting on a park bench somewhere chatting with a friend. For some folks, this would entail language that is, well, as some would say, <clears throat> colorful. As one club put it in the repeater etiquette document, the repeater is to be G-rated 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there are two good reasons for this. First, some language is frankly, illegal to use on the air. Second, we have to remember that the repeater is a shared resource. We do not want to be offensive to those who might be listening. It's not a good way to make friends. I mean, think of it. How many people have thrown away their CBs because of the language that they hear used there? Should I avoid using private personal information? Well, that all depends on you. It's a public resource, and many people could be listening. If you don't want the world to know, don't say it on the repeater. Any other things to do? Well, I think that takes care of the majority of the do's. Now let's turn our attention to a few things that we should absolutely not do. All right. What should I never do? I have but four things that we should not do. It's a nice short list. I like short list of don'ts. And the first one is do not kerchunk the repeater. What does this mean? Uh, to kerchunk a repeater means to press your PTT to wake up the repeater, then let off without saying anything. Now, there are two things wrong with this practice. First, it's a transmission without giving an identification, which is fundamentally illegal. Second, it initiates the annoyance factor for those who might be listening. Second? Well, the next thing to avoid is using the repeater frequency to test your antennas, SWR, or other equipment. We have the same two things wrong with this as with kerchunking. No ID and the annoyance factor. Then how do I test my system? Well, if you need to test your antenna's SWR, move to an unused frequency and do your testing using the lowest power possible. And don't forget to identify yourself when doing it. Now, if you're testing equipment, use a dummy load or something. Now, there is one exception. If you're looking to get a signal report from someone and you want to find out how well you're hitting the repeater, or how, what your audio sounds like, or whatever. Well, I'll get more into this later when I get into the how-tos of operations. Other things to avoid? Yeah, avoid conflict. The repeater is not the place for verbal conflicts. We neither want to start them, nor encourage them. If it seems that a specific topic of conversation is beginning to draw strong debate, then change the subject or politely bow out. You can always just turn off your radio. Any more don'ts? Well, the last one is you don't call CQ on a repeater. Now, on HF bands, CQ is the normal way to do things. But repeater operation is very different. The equivalent to a CQ on HF or a repeater operation is to simply announce your presence. We'll get into this more later when we get to the how-tos. Are we ready to move on to how to use a repeater? Yep, now that we've covered all the do's and don'ts, let's talk about the how-tos. Let me guess, it's not as simple as picking up the mic and talking. Where do we begin? Well, I want to address three common things that we might want to do on a repeater. First, we might want to start a conversation. Now, there's two different kinds of these things. 
The first is where we want to talk to someone specific, what's called a direct call. The second is where well, we really don't care who we talk to, we just want to talk to someone. This is, you know, you just want to talk. The second thing that we might want to do on a repeater is join an existing conversation. And that brings up the whole topic of a round table. And the third thing is getting a signal report. So, how would I begin a new conversation? Well, I said a few moments ago, there are two ways that you might want to do this. You might be looking to talk to someone very specific, or you could be just interested in talking to anyone who will answer. Both of these scenarios start with the same step, listen. Listen to the repeater for a few moments to be sure that the repeater is not currently in use. If it's not in use, then you're going to be able to proceed. Now, if you're calling someone specific, then push your PTT, wait for a moment or two, then say their call letters twice, then your own call letters once. You might consider uh, saying what repeater you're calling them on in case they're scanning several repeaters. You know, they're going to need to know which repeater to return the call on. Then listen to see if they return your call. Remember, it might take them a few moments to get to the radio, so be patient on this one. Now you can repeat this process once if they don't respond immediately. If they don't respond at all, then say something like, nothing heard. We say that in case they're trying to respond and don't realize that you're not hearing them, but they hear you, so at least they know what's going on. Say something like, nothing heard then your call letters, and clear. And this last part tells folks that you're done using the repeater. What would this sound like? Can you demonstrate? Well, I'm going to call you on the repeater. Okay, so first thing I do is I pick up my radio and I listen. And then I will say something like, K9GRD, K9GRD. This is WA2PUX on 240. I let up on the PTT, I'm listening. I give you plenty of time to get to the radio. I'll do it a second time, hit the PTT, wait for a moment, K9GRD, K9GRD. This is WA2PUX on 240. Let up on the PTT, wait for a period of time. Nothing heard. This is WA2PUX, and I'm clear. All done. Why do I want to say their call letters twice? Well, let's assume that the person that you're calling is deep in thought. Maybe they're working on a project. The radio isn't running in the background. It's just noise in the background to them. Now, the first time you say their call, their mind says something like, did I just hear my call? But they're not really sure one way or the other. The second time you say their call, their mind is actually paying attention to the radio and confirms, yep, I did just hear my call. What do we do if someone else is making a directed call? Well, generally speaking, we just stay off the repeater entirely unless it's an emergency. Let them have their time. Now there's one exception. Suppose you know something about this other person's whereabouts and you know maybe you were just talking to them and they went into a store, let's say. Now this other guy is calling that person who just went into the store. So it's, it's a nice thing to tell this other person, you know, what's going on. So you respond with your own directed call to the calling station. Tell them what you know. Harry just stepped into the store and he'll be out in a little while. What if you don't have anyone specific you want to talk to? You just want to talk to someone. Well, this is what we often call CQ on the HF bands. And like I said before, you don't call CQ on a repeater. So what do you do? Well, we simply announce our presence on the repeater and that we're listening or monitoring. Now, like the directed call, 
it is probably a good idea to identify which repeater you're monitoring so folks who that might be listening on a scanner know which repeater to talk to you on. Why is this so different from calling CQ on the HF bands? Well, one thing to remember about the HF bands and a repeater is that on the HF bands, you're depending on people who are touring the band looking for opportunities to talk to someone. So they're just kind of careening past all these various frequencies. On a repeater, you have a captive audience. People are either monitoring the repeater or they're not monitoring the repeater. Giving multiple calls only turns on the annoyance factor for those who are listening and not available to actually talk. So what does this look like? Okay, so as always, we listen first. Okay, I'm listening. The repeater is not in use. I press the PTT. I pause for a moment or two. This is, I pause for a moment, WA2PUX monitoring 240. Let off on the PTT, and then I listen. Why did you pause between this is and your call sign? Well, like the directed call, people are listening to the repeater, and they might be deep in thought or doing something in their shop. You have to give them time for their brain to register that sound is actually coming out of the speaker and that they should pay attention to it. It also might take them a moment or two to break away from whatever it is that they're doing to get to the radio. So give folks a chance to respond before popping over to another repeater. How often should I throw out my call if I don't get a response? Again, remember the annoyance factor. We don't want to sound desperate. We don't want to force folks to shut off their radio because they're tired of hearing us practically beg for someone to answer. We are assuming that someone has turned on their radio or has come into the room where their radio is already on between calls. So maybe every 10 or 15 minutes is reasonable. And for this particular area where I live, this amounts to, well, when I get in the vehicle, and well, that's pretty much it. Everything is about 15 minutes away or less. Now, if I get in my vehicle and I throw my call out and I don't get a, a response, I get to my destination, I go into the store, I come back out of the store, there's no reason you can't throw your call out again and say, you know, this is WA2PUX, I'm mobile again. How do I jump into a conversation if when I turn my radio on, I hear people already talking? What do I do then? Well, if it's not an emergency on your part, then the first rule is to listen. Listen, listen, listen. Now, let's think about a social situation. Two people are having a conversation. Is it polite for a third person to come up and just start talking like the other person isn't even there? Well, the answer is no, it's not polite. And it's equally impolite to do this on a repeater unless it's an emergency. So, you just listen. And like that social situation, the two people are having their conversation, one is talking with the other, the third person quietly walks up and simply listens to the other two talk. The third person is figuring out, well, what are they talking about? They're determining if they're interested in the topic and whether they can contribute to the conversation. Now, if this third person thinks that they can be part of the discussion, they pick a moment and politely inject a comment or two. Now the conversation continues with all three. Now, we do exactly the same thing on a repeater. We listen, and if we decide that we would like to join the conversation, we politely throw out a call between transmissions. Now, of course, these other two people are leaving room between their transmissions so people can do just this. One important point that was made on more than one of the repeater etiquette documents that I reviewed on this topic is to not use the word break to enter a conversation. Use your call letters. The word break is intended to totally stop 
all conversation to make a path for emergency or priority communications. All stations currently using the repeater should give immediate priority to the breaking station. Now, we have three or more people in a conversation on a repeater. This is now what is called a round table. And it's very easy for one or more people to get forgotten in the midst of a round table. Be polite. Make sure that you pay attention to who comes after you in the rotation. Make sure that they don't get left out. Everyone gets their turn. Don't forget to leave room between transmissions so that more people can join in the discussion. Now, when I used to commute my half an hour commute to work, we would sometimes have as many as five or more people in a roundtable discussion. And what a hoot some of these discussions were. And, oh, by the way, don't forget to ID yourself in the midst of the fun. It is very, very easy to forget to do that. Earlier you mentioned testing and signal reports. How do I test my system and how do I get a signal report? Well, testing your antennas SWR, not done on the repeater frequency. Testing your radio, well, it depends on what you're testing. Some tests should be done either on another frequency or into a dummy load. But sometimes you just want to see how you're doing into the repeater or what your audio sounds like. Do you have a hum on there? You know, various things like this. And we need a signal report from someone who is actually hearing us. What does this look like? If you want to see how you're doing into a repeater, simply throw out your call and ask for a signal report. You listen, of course, to make sure that the repeater is not in use. If it's not, then throw out your call sign, ask for a signal report. If you do get a signal report, then thank the person for giving it to you. This may or may not start a conversation. People who might not be available for a whole conversation might take a few moments to give a quick signal report. So unless it's clear that they want to chat, make it short, make it sweet, thank them, and let them get back to what they were doing. So we're all done with our conversation, or we have to jump out of a round table. Now what? Well, we need a way to communicate to other repeater users that we're done using the repeater. Remember, it is a shared resource. So when you've completed a conversation, or you're leaving a conversation like a round table, or have completed trying to call someone, you need to announce that you're done with your call sign and the word clear. Something like, this is WA2PUX and I am clear. That means I'm all done, I'm not doing anything more. Or, this is WA2PUX, I am clear and monitoring. Okay, I'm done using the repeater and I'm listening in case someone wants to talk to me. Or, WA2PUX is clear on your final. Now that means that I'm done using the repeater, but I'm going to listen to whatever it is that you have to say before I go anywhere. So all of this tells other potential repeater users that you are done and the repeater is open for anyone to use it. Do you have any other recommendations? Well, I know that this has been a lot to take in. I know that when I first waded into the whole repeater thing, I did stuff that wasn't very popular. I broke some of these rules. I had some folks who guided me along the way and helped me to become a good repeater user. I am so thankful for their patience. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloo.